Hey everybody, I know that a lot has happened since the last time I taught this class and I wanted to give you some updates on uh, what's happening with um, NetBeans and Glassfish and such since the last time I created videos on this. So the biggest thing is you can see here I have uh, Apache 12, so literally four major who knows how many minor uh, releases from uh, eight the last time I did this. Um, and so it's been a long time. And the bad news is essentially that uh, Glassfish is dead. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any active development on it. And the first thing is to even get Glassfish to work, you have to have Java 8 installed. And I'm up to Java 14 on my machine. So I'm not going to go into all the details, but within um, NetBeans 12, you don't actually get Glassfish to install with it right away. There's a little process which you can download it and, and get started with. And that I, I, I've already done it, so I'm not going to capture that. But I wanted to focus here on what do we do. So I've got it. I've got it downloaded. It shows up here. You can see underneath services, servers, we have Glassfish here. Um, so let me kind of run through the creation of this web project one more time underneath the new stuff. And I've only I've gotten it to work. I've gotten some of your uh, submissions to work that you've turned in, but I don't know what problems I'm going to run into, and that's okay because I want you to see the types of problems and what I do about it. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to come back and create a new project. And so the web projects have to be under Maven now. So if you go under Ant, there is no web project here. It has to be under Maven. So you can see I pick a web application, and I hit Next, and I can name it whatever I want to. And so this is... Um, updated JSP demo. That's a good enough name for that for now. Um, and then here's where you would pick your server. And this is where you can add it in. And it's another sequence of things that happen here. But you can see I already have Glassfish on here. And I actually tried it on Tomcat as well, but it won't work on Tomcat because of Tomcat doesn't have a EJB container. Um, then you can see there's multiple versions, 8, 7, 6 of the Java EE. 8 is fine. You know, I think seven will work as well, but eight is fine. Um, and so you might have to go through and add your server. And then you do that by saying add, and then you you know go through this sequence and then it'll download it. Uh, you have to pick where you're going to install it. And you can see when you pick a place, it'll download it, which it won't do it for me because I've already done it. Um, but this just shows you the place where you make it happen. And I'm not going to show you the rest of that process. It's fairly straightforward. Um, you pick a place, you put it there, but uh, we're, we're focusing in this video on, on getting uh, an app going. All right, so again, you have to pick a server for this because that's going to define what characteristics are available. As I said, Glassfish has some things in it that Tomcat doesn't. Um, it's not to say it's good or bad or whatever. It's just Tomcat is not around uh, some of the back-end things that the Java EE does uh, Tomcat is really around just the front end web server basic stuff. Um, all right, so we have um, our projects created here, um, and there's not much to it, but I can actually go through and run it right away if I want to. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing for you to try and run it all the way right away because that's going to get your Glassfish starter the project started up, your, your server started up, um, and it'll make sure at least everything's behaving for the most part before you've added any code. Um, because once you start adding code, if something breaks, it won't deploy anymore. And it'd be, it'll be tougher to tell whether it's not deploying because your code broke it or if the project broke it. So mine started up. It actually kicked up an Internet Explorer window for whatever reason, and I couldn't get it to open up Chrome for me no matter what I did, I didn't spend that much time on it, but you can see I have hello world here. Um, so that's the basics, everything's running. And I can know it's running because now when I come into services and I have server, Glassfish is running, I can open it up, look at applications, and you can see my updated JSP demo is now something that's deployed on that server. So that gives me a little bit of an extra edge to know what's going on and be able to uh, see uh, that something's working. All right, so now I'm going to run through the other parts of it. I'm going to go through this quickly because I'm not looking to reteach this stuff here exactly, um, the concepts, but I do want you to see it in the new tool. So uh, I can go new, and you can do I'm going to do other just in case it doesn't show up for you. And then underneath persistence, 
um, I can say entity classes from database. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky because of some glitches in the technology again, but I, 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 we'll get it working to at least show you how to get it started with. So I actually have a uh, JDBC already created. You can also create the new create new new here, and it's basically the same as everything you saw before. You might have to add in here. You can see I added in here underneath my NetBeans project the the MySQL connector. Um, it doesn't seem to have quite as tight of a coupling with MySQL as it did in the older versions. So you might have to add that in, but the rest of these pages all look the same. Um, so I have one set up and it may or may not let me do it because I have it already set up, but I'm going to the sales database, my user CTU online. And this is important because it means you're using the same user that I am. Um, and then I'm going to hit remember password, and then I can test my connection. And it, see, connection succeeded. If it's not succeeding for some reason, you might have to go off and play with it. In one of the tests I had to do, I actually had to delete this extra stuff. I had to take this out in order to make it work. Um, I, and I don't remember which version and whatever. I mean, it was something on that wasn't Java 8, but I did have to do that in one of the cases. Um, and then I can hit next. No schema, next, um, and then it creates you know a version of the database there, and I can hit finish. Once I've done that, it should show me my customer and product tables. Now, this is going to the same database you set up for week three, and it's pulling up those tables that you already wrote SQL for, and in this case, by adding it all, it's going to generate the create, read, update, and delete SQL that you wrote in phase three for you in a few clicks. It's not to say it wasn't useful to learn it for phase three. Sometimes you have to build those things by hand, but the, the, we're moving up levels of abstraction that we, you know, the, of the things we have to spend time on as programmers. And one of the things we can do is automatically map back and forth to the table in the broadest sense and the least efficient sense, but with the least amount of code that I have to write as well. Now, generating this code doesn't get me any display stuff, it gives me some back-end stuff, just like when you built the DAOs in week three. But you can see I have my customer and product here. I, I built some, some pieces for that. Now, your classes, depending on your versions, might look slightly different. Because remember, I'm generating it from a tool. This isn't a Java thing, this is a NetBeans that's going on. There is some Java behind it, but exactly how it gets generated is a choice that the NetBeans developers chose. But now that I've got these things, I can do the next phase, which I can right-click now and say new. I'm going to go to other once again. It's actually this one right here, but it might not show up on your list. And I'm going to go into web. And underneath web, uh, I can scroll down, scroll down, and see JSF page from entity classes. So what we just built in that previous sequence was an entity class. Uh, an entity class meaning a, a Java class that overlays a database, it, it basically mirrors a database. And I can generate both of these at the same time. Hit add all and hit next. And then there's some packages, there's some other stuff. If you want to play with this, you can. I'm not going to because there's not really any need to for this demo. I think I did in the other demo, but this is much the same as the other demo. I, I pretty much the screens might have changed slightly, but it's basically the exact same sequence um, that you know, I've been doing for very many, many, many years in teaching this class. All right, so now I've generated all that stuff. Um, it's building, it's working. You can see the co compiler errors. They should go away here in a second. I hope, fingers crossed. And everything's built. Now, what used to happen for me is I used to be able to go through and run this and it would go. It would talk to my database and it was all great and, and swell. Um, where I've been having a problem on my installation, and you may or may not have had it on your installation, is... Um, when I come into my other sources, there's underneath meta INF, there's this file called persistence.xml. And so I'm curious to see what happens here. It says my JDBC connection is going to sales and using Eclipse leak. What was happening when I was running this is it kept telling me my database didn't exist. So if I look at this product and customer persistence units, not much going on here, and, and you don't necessarily need to understand all this stuff at this point. But I, I want to point this out to see what happens. It looks like it's it's running in here. So my application started up, and this is a good thing. It shows me 
product and customers. So if I click on this, wait a minute. It's not showing me anything that was in my database. So if you remember the database here, and I'll pull it up here. Um, you know, my original database, if I go connect to that, um, so mysql-u root dash p, uh, connect sales, uh, select star from product. That's what's in the product table, right? Select star from customer. That's in my customer table. That's what's built by default on those scripts. This isn't here. So what the heck happened? Well, what happened here and what I had to make happen in, inside of here was I had to go through and set up. It's not, it's not actually connecting to MySQL here for whatever reason. And I don't know why. And I haven't been able to figure out why yet. But that's okay. We're, for this class, the point is just trying to get everything up and running. Uh, I'd love to be able to take the time to teach you how to build all this stuff by hand. But you can see by all the code that gets generated, it would take more than one week to make that happen. It would take more than a, an hour or two of chats. Um, so I want you to see how web applications work because that's the time that's given here, but I don't want you to worry about the nuance of everything that's going on. So inside of here, what I had to do, you can see here table generation strategy is none. I had to, and, I, and because I've already done it, that's the reason why mine works, I suspect. But if I come over here to services and I look at databases, notice I have... Two I have another database here called JavaDB. And in JavaDB, I had to set up another connection to that. And in the Java database is a, um, it's a wrapper for a file, essentially. What the JavaDB technology does is it allows you to pretend that you're a database within a Java application by having Java implement all of the JDBC stuff. It pretends to be a database, but it actually just stores everything in files locally. You don't have to start up a server. You don't have to start up a database server. It's, it does in many ways function like a little mini database, um, but it doesn't have all the advantages of MySQL or Oracle or DB2 or whatever the other databases you'd be, you might be using there. So what I had to do to get mine to work the first time was I had to be able to do create at least or drop and create. And so create or drop and create means that if that database doesn't exist, I'm going to create it for you. And drop and create might actually automatically drop it and recreate it for me. So let me actually see what happens. If I do drop and create here, um, and I, I don't think I had to change the rest of these, but I save this, and let me see if I run it again, what happens? It might, it might not do anything. I, I'm guessing it's not going to do anything. But let's see, show all customer. Yep, no customers found. Um, so when you do drop and create, it means you wipe this out every single time. Um, if you just do create here, then it's actually going to re it's just going to create the database if you need it. Um, otherwise if you can leave it at none, it might be telling you that your database doesn't exist. So again, I can't show you the error and that makes me frustrated because it's already created for me, but this is the way you can fix that. Now, the bad news, it's not connecting to the same database you were working at before. The good news is I'm not going to grade you on that um, because I I would love that to be the case. I'd love that to make that happen. I don't think it's worth my time to teach you how to fix that on your machine because you don't know how to build any of the stuff in front of it. And so this little class fish tool that's outdated and dead, as I said to start with, is not worth spending a bunch of time learning. Um, if you want to learn more about that, we can do it offline, but I'm not going to make everybody do that. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. At least I've got this up and running, and I know it can happen. You may or may not get it to run this easily. You might have to work through some of these features. I just want you to know that I'm on your side. Just because it's not working perfectly, you're not going to fail this assignment. You're not going to get terrible grades. What I'd like you to do is, if it's not working, take screenshots. Show me exactly what's happening. Put those screenshots into your Word doc and submit that Word doc with your code. Um, your code might work on my machine if it's, even if it's not working on yours. And with your screenshots, I might be able to give you advice to make it work on yours. And so if you'll do that agreement with me, take screenshots, do what you can, don't stress about it, and then I guarantee you I'll do, you, I'll do everything I can to help you get through this week and learn as much as you can. And, and then don't stress, stress this class and th this set. You're being asked to learn a whole lot of demo without a heck of a lot of training. 
Um, and that's okay. It's a good experience to see these things, but I'm not going to, you know, punish you for not having it all work right away. All right. So use that the best you can and let me know how I can help.